Today, we are going to put a local web application on the internet using Heroku. And so Heroku is a place where we can put our code so that anyone around the world can see it. And so we have this Heroku code folder here, and we're going to go ahead and put our Angular code inside of it. And so our Angular code has some directives in it, and that wouldn't have worked with GitHub pages, but it will work when we host it on Heroku instead. And so in order to host it on Heroku, there are a couple other code pieces we have to write to get this to work. And so we're going to go ahead and open Sublime here and make it like that. And inside of here, we are going to create a folder called package json and we are going to go ahead and put it in our heroku code folder hit enter and then write some code we're going to do an open bracket and this is going to hold some details about our application and so the name of the application some dependencies we might need that type of stuff and so we're going to go ahead and say the name is going to be called tutorial and we're going to write some other things here and we're going to write start and the reason we're going to say start node server.js is that this file server.js is going to hold like what's going to start up our application. And so it's going to hold some routes, it's going to hold a bunch of stuff, and it's going to be written in node. And we're going to talk about that later. But basically, this is kind of what talks to Heroku and says like, hey, these are the files I'm running. It's the back end of our application. And we want Heroku to look at our server.js file to then figure out what should be shown on the page. And then from server.js, it will go to our index.html and then that will load everything that we want it to, you know, import Angular, all that good stuff. And let's keep writing. And inside of here, our dependency is gonna be express. And so we're gonna have 4.13.3. That's the version of express that we're gonna be using. And express is just a Node.js framework. And we'll talk more about what Node and express, all of that means when we start writing our server.js file, the backend, what's gonna start our server. And so continuing to write here. And this is our package.json. And so we have some details, the name, the version, where we should start looking when we want to you know, start this application. We should look at the server.js, which is going to start up our server. You know, We're using Express and our server.js, so we have that dependency. I'm creating it, and then it has this license. And so now we're going to save this, and we're going to create another file. And it's going to be called proc file. And it's going to be in the same Heroku code folder. Everything's pretty much going to be in here. We'll save it up. And in here, we're just going to write web node server.js. And this, again, is just saying, like, where do we want to start? We want to start at the server.js, and we're running node inside of it. And node is just this back-end tool. Before, we were doing the front end of the application, and so Angular, index.html, CSS, all of that, that is front end. And now we're doing this back end that's going to start up our server and all of that good stuff. And so now that's it for our proc file. And now we get to the meat of it, which is our server.js file. So we're writing this file, and it's actually going to be the last file that we write in this tutorial. And so inside of here, we're going to create a variable named express. And we are just going to say we are requiring express in this application. And so it's going to say, go ahead and go get express and then put it in this variable called express. Next, we'll have a var called app, and this is going to be our application, and it's going to be an express application. Then we need to set the port number, and so we're going to say var port. And there are two options here. We're going to go process.env dot port and this just means that Heroku is going to set the port or 8080 and so this basically means like Heroku can set the port or if Heroku for some reason it can't set the port for us then we're going to go ahead and be at port 8080. Next we'll go app.use express.static underscore underscore dir name and then semicolon. And so what this line of code does is say we have, you know, images, CSS, you know, HTML, all of the static stuff in our application, this line of code allows that to run. And where does it allow it to run? In this dir name variable. And so this dir name just evaluates to the folder name. And so wherever that path is, wherever our code is, that's where this evaluates to. So it allows like any images or CSS or index, you know, HTML stuff, it allows that to run. And so the last thing that we have to do here is set up some routes. And so when you go to you know, a page on the internet, the thing that gets loaded first, that's part of a route and part of the URL 
ness of it. And so if I type in one URL, it takes me somewhere. If I type in a different URL, maybe slightly modified, it'll take me somewhere else. That can be controlled inside of here. And so we'll go app.get and it says, you know, that when you go to google.com or just, you know, the pure URL with nothing like after it, with no nothing after that slash after the com, what do we want to happen? Well, we're going to have this function with a request and a response. And we are going to say that the response is going to render the index file and so our index.html. Now our server code is set up, but it isn't listening for any requests. And so when I go to a URL, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, I'm asking for information. I'm sending a request and the server goes ahead and figures out, okay, what do I send? What response do I send? Okay, this is the one that they're going to, you know, they're asking for the homepage. I'll send them that code that renders the web page. And so we can go ahead and do this. We can get our server to start listening for these requests by going app.listen port, which is our port number that we set up here, either set up by us or Heroku. And then inside of this, we're going to write a function and it's just going to say console.log. It's just going to print out app running. We'll go ahead and save this and then head into our command line. So we can actually just drag this folder into our terminal here or command line if you're using Windows. And here it is and it puts me right in that directory. So if I do ls, I can see everything. Now you're going to be using something called npm and if you do not have this installed go ahead and click the link below but we are going to npm install and what this is going to do is it's going to install our express dependency and so here we said one of our dependencies in our package.json file was express and so it's like okay npm install let me go ahead and install your dependencies for you which is super awesome right? Now we can go to Heroku and set up an account. And so if we scroll over here, I'm on the Heroku website and I'm gonna go ahead and sign up here. And we're gonna enter some information. And for your primary development language, you're gonna choose Node.js. Now we'll go ahead and confirm our email. With your email confirmed, you can go ahead and set up a password. And so go ahead and write that in. And now our account is set up, so we can click here and proceed as our user. And now we're live on Heroku. And so now what we need to do is get our code onto this website, onto the cloud here. And so to do that, we are going to use the command line. And so we'll go ahead and search Heroku command line tools. And basically, we're going to install some tools into our command line, kind of like you install, like, you know, npm or git. And we'll go ahead and go here and it says download and install and you're going to use this one if you're in Mac or Windows or whatever it gives you all the directions here this link is also down below so go ahead and install that and then once you've installed it you can go ahead and go Heroku dash dash version and this will tell you like if you have it installed if you have something that's similar to this you have the tool belt you have the command line tools then you're good to go from the command line here, we are actually going to log into Heroku. So we're going to go Heroku login. And then we're going to enter our credentials. And we're logged in. Now we can actually see if our app can run locally with Heroku. And so we're going to do Heroku local web. And this is the same thing we did with like, you know, HTTP server. It's the same type of deal. And so we'll go ahead and check out what this looks like. And Heroku will automatically put your code on localhost 5000. And there's our code. We have this directive that's allowing us to write the code for like this type of thing once, but display it twice with books I need to buy. We can add stuff, you know, whatever it is, we can add it, it works. Now we can only see this code locally. So if you know your friend tries to go to localhost 5000, it's not going to work for them because this is running locally on our computer. Now to get the code to them, to you know put it on the internet, the cloud, so everyone can see it, we have a little bit more work to do. And so we'll go ahead and stop our server here. Now we need to have Git. And so if you do not have Git installed, there's a link down below. You can watch some other GitHub tutorials, but you need to make sure you have Git for the next part of this because we are going to deploy our website with Git. And so you can check if you have it with Git dash dash version. And if something similar to this comes up, then you're good to go. If it says something like unknown or doesn't understand what you're asking, then go ahead and download it with the link down below. 
So from here, we'll go ahead and do git init, you know, initializing this GitHub repository. And then we are going to git add dot, just adding everything in the repo, and then git commit because we're initting this application, this web application. It adds everything, it commits everything. And from here, we'll create our application. We'll do Heroku create, and this will create an app. And so we'll go ahead and go back here and refresh this page, and we should have an app here. And it's gonna be the same app that we just initialized from the command line. And so here, it's called Guarded Brook you know, 64454. Yours will have probably a different name than mine does, but that's okay, don't worry about that. Just know it's your application, this is where your code is going to go. And so with this all set up, we'll go ahead and copy the git repo that also came with it, and we'll go git push, paste that in there, master because we're pushing it onto the master branch of this. We'll hit enter, and now it's gonna push everything up to Heroku. This may take some time, so go ahead, grab a cup of coffee, it's gonna load here. And there we go, now it's deployed. How do we get access to it? Where is it on the internet? Well, it's with this link. So we'll go ahead and copy this link and paste it into our web browser here. And there's our code. So if you go to this right now, this, you know, guarded brook, 64454herokuapp.com, you are gonna see this exact same thing because it's on the internet, it's live, it's dynamic, it uses Angular, it uses directives, and it's hosted on the internet, which is great. Now, one question you might be asking is that in our Heroku code folder, we kind of have our backend and our front end mixed. We have this index.html, which is front end, JS, that's all front end, and then we have these other, you know, node server files that are back here, also kind of in the same area. Well, we can fix this by creating a new folder called public, and we can put our front end code inside of it. But what this means is that in our server file here, we are going to have to change this static express thing to directory name plus slash public because that's where our static code is now. So if we save all this and then go ahead and go through this process again, then go ahead and refresh this page again, everything still works. So now you know how to host a Angular application on Heroku. If you have any questions, leave them down below, and I will see you next Friday with a new tutorial. See you then.